Today we are going to discuss um, one other method of solving quadratics. This video will discuss how to solve quadratics using square roots. So you can use the square root method in a couple of different cases. The most common case to use the square root method will be whenever your b value is zero, or in other words, you don't have a just x term, you only have x squared terms. So this is a very basic example x squared equals 9. Once the x squared is by itself, you can simply take the square root of each side. And in this case, we would get x is equal to, and here is what most students forget, positive or negative 3. Because it's a square root, an even root, it has to include both the positive and the negative value of the number. So in this case, x could equal positive or negative 3. Now, here we also have a very basic example because we just have x squared is equal to a number again. But notice in this case that x squared is equal to a negative value. Now, we know that whenever we square a number, it will give you a positive value. Um, but that only is the case if we're dealing with real numbers. So here, whenever we take the square root of a negative, we will end up with a complex number solution. So when we take the square root of each side, we still have to include the positive and the negative. And so here we would get x equals positive or negative square root of negative 1. And as we learned earlier, whenever you have the square root of a negative, that introduces um, the number i. And the square root of negative 1 is just simply 1i. So the solution to this problem would be x equals positive or negative i. Let's look at a few that are a little bit trickier. Not much, but just a bit. So in order to solve this problem, like the previous two problems, um, what we'll want to do is we want to first isolate the x squared. In order to isolate the x squared, we first can move the 5 to the other side of the equation by adding it to each side. Now you could take the square root at this point, but it will be a little bit trickier with this coefficient, so I would first divide each side by that coefficient so that the x squared is completely by itself. And to solve this, then, is just like the previous two examples. We get the square root of each side, and the square root of 1 is a positive or a negative 1. So x, in this case, is equal to a positive or a negative 1. Now, these next examples that we're going to look at still will use the square root method but they just look a little bit different than before. Whenever we have an expression that um, is written as a perfect square, so x plus 1 squared, um, and then it has no just single x's on the other side of the equation, um, that's a good case where we can again use the square root method. So what you want to do in this case to use the square root method is take the square root of each side, just like we have in the past. When you do that here, you end up with x plus 1 on the left side of the equation, and then on the right, it will equal a positive or a negative 3. So when you isolate the x, you'll subtract 1 from each side, and you would end up with negative 1 plus or minus 3. Now, I don't think you should leave your answer like that because you can easily evaluate each expression there. You can add the two together, negative 1 plus 3 will give you 2, and then you could subtract as well. Negative 1 minus 3 will equal a negative 4. And so the two solutions again that we get are that x is equal to either 2 or negative 4. So just like before, make sure you're getting two solutions for each problem, um, but this one just requires an extra step at the end. All right, let's look at just one more example of using the square root method. 
Here we have x plus 2 quantity squared equals negative 16. So hopefully what you notice here is because we have this quantity squared equal to a negative, we're going to end up with some imaginary numbers in our answer. First, I'm going to take the square root of each side of the equation, and in doing so, that cancels out the squared. On the left, I get x plus 2. On the right, I have positive or negative square root of negative 16. Now, when we take the square root of a negative, it introduces an imaginary number. So the square root of 16 is 4, but because it was a negative, it will be 4i. So we end up with x plus 2 equals positive or negative 4i. Then to solve for x, we'll subtract 2 from each side. We get x equals negative 2 plus or minus 4i. And unlike the previous problem, we can't combine terms here because this has an i with it, the 4 does, um, whereas the negative 2 doesn't have an i. So we just have um, both a real and imaginary part to our answer. Um, our answer will be x equals negative 2 plus 4i and x equals negative 2 minus 4i. So that's a quick rundown of how to solve quadratics using square roots. I hope that helps as you go through the rest of your practice problems.